Hey everyone, this is Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com and I am back here with a new hand history review for you guys. So today's hand was sent to me by Keith. As you guys can see there, he's got pocket fives in the, what is that, the small blind. This is a uh, six max, one cent, two cent game and I believe this was played on, or was placed on, played on Poker Stars. Um, now, as you guys can also see here, this is an anti game um, and that is really important to note. So... Uh, the first person into the pot is villain five. He's under the gun. And I just want to point out right away that making a standard raise here to six cents or three times the big blind is definitely a large mistake in an anti game like this. Because as you guys can see, the pot is already uh, 12 cents because of all the antis in the middle there. So basically what that means is if you are playing in an anti game in order to deny people the correct odds to call with all sorts of crazy stuff and uh, you need to make sure that you are making your preflop raise size bigger. So I would typically go probably eight cents minimum here, uh, perhaps even 10 cents in a spot like this. But Anyways, that's just a small thing I just want to throw out right away, just uh, so you guys know that if you're playing anti-games in the future. But Villain 5 actually does not play a significant role in the hand. Uh, the player that we're going to be up against is Villain 1, who makes the call there. Villain 2 gets out of the way, and, you know, Keith here with uh, the Pocket 5s, I think we just have a very standard call here out of the small blind. I don't really think there's a huge point in re-raising. Um, I talk about these stakes about, you know, in, in my books, in my blog, and in these videos, is that specifically with these small pocket pairs, the biggest value is just seeing a flop as cheaply as possible, hitting a set, and winning a big pot because players at these stakes are not very good at folding. So I typically, uh, in a spot like this, don't really like three betting with a hand like this. I'd much prefer to have something like ace queen or something if I wanted to uh, to throw in a three bet because that's a hand that uh, has a much higher chance of flopping something strong. Uh, whereas with these baby pocket pairs, honestly, a lot of the time at these stakes, you're just seeing a flop, hoping to hit that, that set, which is going to happen one out of eight times or whatever it is. You know, if you don't hit the set, it's not going to have a hand like pocket fives, especially out of position like this. Remember, we're in the small blind is not going to have a ton of value. So I uh, really like Keith's decision, as I already talked about, because villain five made it the uh, his raise size was not correct, not uh, nearly big enough for an anti uh, game like this. This is why you can see why everybody's calling here. So it kind of um, helps prove my point that I already discussed earlier. Anti games got to raise it more preflop or this is what happens. Anyways, let's go to the flops. The flop's obviously excellent for our hand. Uh, flop the full house. So what should we be doing in a spot like this? Well, as I've mentioned many times before in these videos, in my books and on my poker blog, I think that when you are in the small blind, uh, first act, of course, the small blind is always first act on the flop. Um, and it is a large multi-way pot at the lower limits like this. And you flop a huge hand. The definite number one play you want to be making here is check raise we we don't need any of that gto stuff in a spot like this this is a hundred percent check raise and the reason why you want to be doing that is because check raise gets the most money in the middle as we know players these stakes are not very good at folding they don't like to fold uh, any kind of big hand if anyone's got an ace here they're never folding for any amount so we want to get the most money in possible. The best way to do that by far here is to check raise because once we check here, there's four players left to act. Very good chance one of them is going to make a bet, which allows us to put in the raise and get the maximum amount in the middle. If we were to just bet out here, conversely, um, you know, they just have the opportunity to just call, which keeps the pot smaller. We don't want that when we have a full house against a bunch of players who are not very good at folding. So Keith agrees with that. He makes the check. So I, I think he's playing this hand perfectly so far. Uh, folds all the way to villain one, actually. And by the way, let me, uh, bef I forgot to uh, give the reads on villain one. Villain one, uh, Keith told me, is playing around 25, or sorry, 29% of his hands. Didn't really have any other information on him. But basically, Keith told me that this guy's not specifically a huge fish. But I'm going to say, you know, a VPIP of 29 is still pretty high, even for 6 max. And so I'm going to say that this is probably not an excellent 
regular, but you know, probably isn't a huge fish either. So it's it's one of those players who's sort of in between, maybe one of those players that I call an SLP. If you've read my first book, Crushing the Microstakes, which stands for a semi-loose passive. Um, so this player just ha- basically has a reasonably wide range, but probably isn't going to be in there with all sorts of complete nonsense like a huge fish would be with like 8-5 or you know, ace-deuce offsuit and you know every type of uh, nonsense hand possible. So we want to put this player in a reasonably uh, tight range, but he's not thinking quite on the level of a regular ever with a uh, either with a very strong range. So uh, anyways, villain one does make the bet there, which luckily we got that or this check raise opportunity situation here would have been tragically would have gone tragically wrong so this gives us the opportunity to raise it up of course Uh, i like the sizing there from keith i think it's pretty good basically you just want to get an amount so that you're you know committing a large chunk of your stack so that essentially on any turn you can pretty much just shove so uh, everyone's going to fold it's going to come back to villain one and he decides to make the call so what do we put a player remember we're talking about a player who's probably you know not a huge fish but not a regular either so i do think he's going to have quite a few aces in his range here maybe not every single ace remember he's playing about 29 percent of his hands but i i think you know we're looking at a player who you know is probably not going to fold any of the aces that he has here as as most players never will at these stakes so you know i'd put him on pretty much any kind of ace going down now i i would tend to discount the bigger aces like ace king ace queen because i think that a lot of times he may have re-raised those pre-flops so i'm I'm probably thinking more along the lines of an ace jack ace 10 ace 9 ace 8 ace 7 stuff like that uh we are of course way ahead of all of those hands so let's go to see a turn the turn is a queen so you know i think the queen is a reasonable card once again i think i will for the most part discount well discount ace king i think i think that hand probably re-raises preflop a lot and, and i think ace queen will a fair amount as well but i mean the bottom line here guys is when you have a full house at the micros we don't want to be looking for the skeletons in the closet and trying to convince ourselves that oh my god he must have hit the miracle on, on the turn or something like that i mean you guys if you watch my videos here on youtube you probably already know the results of this hand because you know what kind of hands that people send me mostly big coolers but we're as i always talk about it's all about the playing the process in poker and not trying to you know overthink specific hands because again you know we always have to put a player on a range of hands in poker you know um once again this this player can have ace jack ace 10 ace 9 ace 8 ace 7 maybe some other aces here I'm going to say that he probably does have an ace, but, you know, we're still ahead of the vast majority of that range. So uh, now in this spot, what should we do here? Well, I do just like a shove at this point. That's why I think the, the raise size on the flop is perfect because it just shets, sets it up perfectly for a shove here. I've got a dollar thirty-five left. There's a dollar fifty-eight in the pot. Easy to shove the rest in. Um, uh, Keith decides to go for 91 cents. I mean, it's kind of splitting hairs, I guess. It's okay. I mean, the, you can ship the, it all in or... I get. I mean, you can bet the 91 cents. It really doesn't make a huge difference. I just like the fact that we're making a large bet here. I don't like going for a double check raise here because, you know, it just gives him a chance with a seven or something to check behind. And we don't want to just give him that free equity, right? We want to make sure that we are making all of those hands pay. And again, we're again, we are ahead of the vast majority of his range. You know, it is definitely possible. I mean, I kind of discounted ace four or ace three ace deuce but it's definitely possible the players playing 29 percent of hands has those I, I ace five is obviously going to be extremely rare because we have two fives in our hand and there's one on the board so we are ahead of the vast majority of his range here so i love the decision to just get the money in and i don't like going for a double check raise so villain one does shove the rest in i mean Again, guys, I mean, there's really nothing to say at this point. I mean, we got 44 cents left. Uh, you don't like to get, you know, shoved on the turn of the river at the micros, as I talk about uh, in my books and, and in these videos a lot. It's usually a very, very strong hand. But at this point, I mean, we've got 80% of our stack in the middle. We've got a full house. I've already discussed his entire range and how we are far, far ahead of his entire range. 
player like this, again, he could easily just take ace jack, ace ten, and say, I'm not folding it, so I may as well just shove the rest in. I mean, it, it's it's a there's no decision to be made at this point. It's just an automatic call, and basically we just see the river and see the results. I know you guys want to see the results, so what do we got here? And, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those cooler. You know, guys, uh, as I've talked about before, or as I mentioned just five a couple minutes ago, these are the kind of hands that people send me again and again and again. Uh, usually with the question, can I ever fold this full house? Uh, no, this is not a hand that you ever fold. I don't think I'll get too much disagreement with this in the comments below. You guys can let me know if you're ever getting away here, but I don't think I'll get too much disagreement in a spot like this. Um, Keith, nobody's ever folding a full house. Uh, for 100 big blinds or less, I should make that clear if this is 200 big blinds or 300 big blinds deep. It definitely does change things quite a bit, and you definitely can make some sort of... Uh, you can pot control or maybe just not get you know, not get all the money in or maybe make a sick fold in some cases where you're ultra, ultra deep. But for 100 big blinds or less with a full house, I mean, basically this is just one of those massive cooler spots where everybody's going broke. As I always say, guys, like... The shoe is always going to be on the other foot in, at some point in the future in poker. We're going to be the ones with the ace queen. He's going to be the one with, with the pocket fives. The only thing you ever need to ask yourself is, is he going to be folding his pocket fives to us? You guys already know the, the answer to that question. Of course not. They're always going broke to us. So it's basically, as I always say, it's a neutral EV wash in the end. Just play this hand again and again and again, and we're just trading the chips back and forth. There's no profit on either side. So that's about all I got to say for this hand. Once again, uh, as always, I want to know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I think this is a pretty straightforward hand. I don't expect there to be a whole lot of debate. It's just kind of one of these cooler hands. But again, you guys can let me know your thoughts on how you play this hand. If you guys enjoy watching micro stakes poker hand history reviews like this and strategy videos, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my YouTube channel here as I'm trying to put up videos uh, just like this uh, a lot more frequently actually these days. Um, and lastly, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. It's called Massive Profit at the Micros. It's the top link in the description below, and that'll give you my complete strategy on how I crush these stakes. It's around 50 pages. It's completely free. You can read it in an afternoon, and it should help you start getting much better results in these games. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. This has been Nathan Williams with BlackGreen79.com.